Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.9.7 and Eagle Dynamics CH47F Chinook Module. Today we're going to take a little look at flight plans in this early access module. Uh, this information may change over time, but I thought it'd be fun to give you all a basic understanding of how the system works at present, and what is possible in this helicopter. It's one of the first aircraft that we have in the sim with a fully simulated CDU kind of FMC style setup, and uh, it'll be a bit of fun to go over what you can do with it. So uh, jumping into the cockpit, I'm going to demonstrate the absolute minimum setup of the helicopter in order to use the navigational systems. It seems at the present point in early access that ground power is not implemented, because that would be the simplest way of doing this. So what we'll have to do is start the APU and turn on the APU generator in order to get uh, kind of basic system functionality up and running. So let's just set the camera here so we can see what happens. If I go ahead and just turn on the battery, uh, battery power alone will give us the chronometer. It will give us the two uh, backup uh, instruments here. They'll power on in just a moment. And it gives us one of the CDUs. However, I'm not 100% sure whether or not that gives us uh, the, the Iggies, the actual navigational systems at this stage. I suspect it doesn't. Uh, but uh, who knows, who knows. So in any case, uh, what we'll then do is we'll go ahead and start the APU. So for that, we're going to go APU to run and wait five seconds. And then we're going to push it to start for two seconds. And then release. And we can hear the APU is starting to turn. And eventually we should get the, the APU ready light. And at this stage we can turn on the APU generator. And that's the minimum that we require in order to get our avionics. So at this stage we have all of the multifunction displays, we have both CDUs, uh, and all the other associated instruments are working. So that should do the job nicely. Uh, with that, uh, I'll go over the, the kind of interfaces that you have with the flight plan. Uh, and of course, the, the default flight plan is just going to be the waypoints that are created in the mission editor when the mission was created. It, or if you're in multiplayer, it could be waypoints that you've created uh, in the, the kind of route planning mode before you actually jump into the aircraft. So here we see the flight plan summary uh, as displayed on the multifunction display. You can get flight plan information both on this multifunction display page, but also on on the CDU. We'll cover the multifunction display first. If you don't have this up on one of your screens because you have something else up on the display, uh, then you, ha you have the option, let me get something else here, you have the option of pressing system and that takes you to the systems index and then down here we have flight plan summary. Choose that and you get your flight plan. This screen is very very basic, it doesn't do very much, but it gives you a simple reference uh, when you're uh, trying to figure out kind of where you are in your flight plan. You have paging controls here, if you had multiple pages worth of flight plan contents. Uh, note that um, your, your flight plan can contain up to 89 waypoints. Uh, this aircraft actually calls them ACPs, or air control points. Uh, they're numbered 1 to 89. You then have an additional 10 points, numbered 90 to 99, and they're reserved for mark points. So yeah, 89 waypoints, 10 mark points. So yeah, you could have multiple pages, but in this case we don't. Uh, you also have FPP control here, which will move the highlight through your flight plan. Uh, you then also have the direct to control here. So if I was to highlight one of these, I could then hit dir, and it would set up a direct to flight plan immediately. And then I can also flip flop between the primary flight plan and the alternate flight plan. We currently don't have one of those loaded. You'll then also see that you have uh, the expected speed, Oh, actually, the, the, the type of point, these are all cruise points. I think currently cruise is the only type of point that is implemented. In the future, we'll have hover points and all kinds of other types of point. Uh, we've got estimated time of arrival. Uh, we've got course and we've got distance. Um, and then we also have the option to highlight one of these points and press CDU. And it will display that point on the CDU and give you quick access to adjusting different parameters for it or just looking at things like your ETA, ETE. So just so you're aware there. Uh, we then also have some more options down the right hand side for how this information is displayed. We're currently in summary page. There is legs, but that's currently not implemented. 
There's data, and that expands the data block for each one of these, giving you access to the full set of coordinates and magnetic variation. Fuel page is also not implemented, uh, and then we, we can go back to summary by pressing summary. So yeah, you only really have summary and data at the present time. Pressing return drops you to the previous page that you were looking at. In our case, it's the instruments. So that gives you, you know, you, you can actually peek the flight plan and then very quickly jump back to what you were looking at previously. Uh, but I'm going to leave the flight plan up here just now. Uh, another thing that I'll cover is how to make uh, interesting symbology appear on the HSD. Uh, if we go to the map controls, um, actually, no, sorry, not map controls. If we go to the overlay, thank you. <laughs> if we go to the overlay one, and you can see it's green box there, we want to select flight plan. And then flight plan information will actually appear on the HSD. We can range this out a little bit so that we actually see all of the points. Uh, the point that you're currently navigating to is white. The others all appear as pink. You see that you're sequencing normally here. If we were to choose direct, uh, then we would get a line directly to the uh, the waypoint selected. We can also, if you see here, this one that's, that's labeled off, we impress this and it will display the chart. However, the chart is only available at certain map scales. So just be aware of that. We can press off again to simply turn that off. Looking down at the CDU, uh, you'll see that we've got hotkeys for accessing certain pages across the top. Flight plan is one of the hotkeys. So we can simply press flight plan, we'll immediately get access to our flight plan. Now this first page will be familiar to people who've uh, you know, flown civilian flight simulators, you know, simulating things like Airbuses and Boeings. The, the format is pretty similar to the flight plans on those CDUs. Uh, we can use the up and down arrow to go through the entries in this flight plan. Blue is what's called historic points, so points that we're either currently at or have already passed. White is our current to point, the point that we're currently flying to. And then the magenta entries are future points on the flight plan. And of course, end is the end of the flight plan. Uh, as I said before, these would, would be automatically loaded from the mission editor. You can also choose your sequencing mode. By default, it's in automatic, which means it will immediately sequence to the next point as you overfly it. You can switch to manual, in which case you'll need to manually sequence your points. Uh, cool, I'm going to leave that on automatic just now. You can also click on the right-hand side of any of these points to get the data page for that point. Uh, and then clicking on the, the left-hand side in this mode doesn't do anything. You can't directly modify the flight plan in this mode. You need to click Mod Flight Plan in order to then be in the Modifying Flight Plan mode. You can make whatever edits you would like to make here. To remove a point, you simply enter Dash into the scratch pad and then select the entry you want to remove with the left-hand line select. I've now removed four. If I then hit Execute, it would make that change. Uh, is that reflected? Yeah, it's immediately reflected on the MFD. However, if I ha hit uh, Cancel Modification, it will uh, forget about that change that I was making. So just be aware that you need to do Modify Flight Plan. If you wanted to add a point, that's actually quite easy to do as well. Let's go ahead and uh, choose a point to, to add here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use Left Alt and Left Click to get my coordinates display and uh, jump back into the, the cockpit. And wherever you want to add a point, you basically want to click the line select key on the left below the one you want to insert uh, with the coordinates in the scratch pad. Now in the real helicopter you can enter MGRS, uh, that's currently not implemented. Uh, however what is implemented is normal lat long standard, but you can also do lat long decimal. Uh, you need a minimum of four digits uh, for, for each uh, kind of side of the coordinate, so, you know, for the northing or the easting in this case, uh, but you can enter additional coordinates for more accuracy. Um, the system can also ap accept DAFIF points if you put a f slash in first. These would be uh, like airport identifiers and, and, and other kind of waypoints. I don't have a good source for what those are at the present time on the DCS maps, so we'll ignore that for now, but just be aware that it is possible to enter like waypoint names and things like that if you proceed it with a forward slash. Um, and we, uh, yeah, we also, as I said, have the ability to do standard lat longs. So let, let's try entering this point here. I'm um, going to do a north, and I'm going to keep these simple. I'm just going to do the minimum, the four digits. So uh, 3632. 
and then we can enter the easting. Note that for this aircraft, you don't need the leading zero. So it's just 3839 in this case. And I'm going to do the line select key on waypoint four. And you'll note that it places it above waypoint four. Whichever one you choose, it will place it above. So I've now uh, added an extra point to this flight plan. Uh, and it, uh, it takes us out of mod when we do that, it seems. So you can see here, here are the points. Uh, it retains the numbering, by the way. So if you don't like that, if you want to, to renumber, uh, be aware that you can go into flight plan management and select renumber and then go back to flight plan. You'll then find that they're then numbered sequentially once more. So we've got uh, ACPs two, three, four, five, and six, with six being the end of the flight plan. Uh, that makes my flight plan a little kind of wibbly now because I'm kind of going back and forth, but you get the idea. Um, as I said before, we can do a direct two. Uh, so if I press dur, uh, I can actually switch from doing a normal flight plan to say, right, I want to go straight to point four. So dur, and then line select key beside four. You'll now see that a bunch of the points have been uh, colored blue, making them historic. Same here on the MFD. And if we look over here, you'll see that the, the helicopter is now going to navigate straight to that point and then continue the flight plan from there. That's how it's set up to work. So nice and simple, just press the Dur key uh, and then you're able to do a direct to. Flight plan will take us back to the normal flight plan. Something else to note is that the aircraft actually maintains two flight plans. Uh, you always have a flight plan and an alternate. Uh, if we go to the index here, you'll see that we have ALTN, alternate. Again, this will be familiar to those of you who are uh, flying things like Boeings and Airbuses. Uh, by default, this will be blank. Uh, there's no way currently of defining this in the mission editor, uh, so you can only create this either by hand or using the flight plan management. So note that if I go into flight plan and I go into flight plan management, I have these four options down the right hand side here. So I can add the alternate. What this will do is it will take all of the, the points that are in the alternate flight plan and append them to the main flight plan. I can replace the flight plan where it will take the entire alternate flight plan and dump it on top of the current flight plan, effectively erasing that. I can replace the alternate. It will take everything that's in my current flight plan and put it into the alternate. Uh, save flight plans currently not implemented. That would in effect save the flight plan into the DTC, which is not currently in the game. And I also have the option to erase the flight plan that will com completely blank out everything that I've got there. Uh, load flight plan similarly not implemented at this time. So let's go ahead and replace the alternate. If I press that, you'll see that we're now in the alternate, and it now has all of the points uh, that I had in my main flight plan. We can now flip-flop here on the MFD. So flight plan summary, alternate summary. You can see that these are both identical. Something that you might want to do is you might want to have the alternate set up to be your return. So if I go to alternate management, I can actually reverse the alternate. So if I press that, the alternate is now the same as the main flight plan, but going the other way. That could be useful. Another standard use for the alternate is, as the name might suggest, uh, setting up uh, an airfield that you want to use as your alternate in the event that you have to abort your mission. Um, so you, you, would, you could manually create an alternate that will give you a route uh, towards your kind of divert uh, or alternate airfield. Nice and simple. So uh, that is, at this time, basically all of the functionality that you've got with regards to flight plans, the CDU, and the flight plan summary page on your MFD. Okay, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. If you'd like to further support me and the channel, you have the option of joining Deep Hack's Ground Crew. For a small monthly fee, not much more than a cup of coffee, you can help me in creating this content. I really appreciate those of you who've already done so. There's a, a few small benefits if you do so. You get to join the Deep Hacks Ground Crew Discord server, where we can all hang out and chat, uh, and also I occasionally do flights together. Uh, I've also started uploading some of the mission files as well. Uh, and of course, apart from that, you just know that you're helping me out. Uh, but otherwise, everybody should subscribe, like, and comment. And thank you all so very much for watching. See you next time. Bye.